Hello everybody. Welcome again to another video lecture of Royce Academy. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss about a very, very important concept or a very, very important topic of the biochemistry aspect that is very much important for brushing the concept regarding the competitive examination held nationally by the government as well as the private organization. Okay. So in this lecture, I'm going to basically or particularly discuss about the interconnections or interconversions of different pathways. I'm going to deal with particularly two pathways, the carbohydrate and the protein pathways, since these two are the only and specific pathways uh, which are mostly interrelated with each other. The intermediary products, the end products or the byproducts are getting converted from one pathway to another in subsequent courses of reactions in order to maintain the vitality of the different physiological and bioclinical responses manifested in our body. Okay, so uh, the topic of today's discussion is based on uh, majorly the interconversion or the interconnection between the mitochondrial and the cytosolic biochemical pathway. Either it is protein metabolism or the carbohydrate metabolism. Right, so let us have a look at how this happens. We know that the dietary protein the dietary proteins that we consume on a daily basis, on a daily basis of diet from the protein rich substances like meat, fish, egg, then casein, yogurt, ice creams, beans, legumes, pulses, nuts and all, which are very much rich in the protein contents also. Those dietary proteins that have been consumed, either vegan diet or non-vegan diet on a daily basis, are being broken down into simpler amino acids. And in the subsequent digestion chambers or reactions in the protein uh, digestion or the protein metabolism pathways where the major proteins are being broken down into the simpler forms for the cellular uptake that happens in the stomach in the presence of HCl or the acid and in the presence of success enterocles, a mixed juice of the pancreas and the intestinal digestive enzymes that happens to be happening within the small intestine in the duodenum portion. Okay, so the proteins have been broken down to the amino acids and the oligopeptides, which are also known as the intracellular proteins, which functions as the intracellular proteins for the other biosignaling and bioclinical machineries or pathways. Right. So this namely proteoses and peptides. So this dietary protein along with the combination of intracellular proteins. are broken down into simpler structure of amino acids. Into the simpler structure of amino acids. Amino acids are again in course of catabolism are being converted into two different forms. Okay. One of them is the ammonia I NH4 positive. And another one is alpha keto glutaric acid or alpha keto acid. Okay. Or alpha keto glutarate. Name or alpha keto acid, sorry, sorry. Now, this particular course of reaction is happening within the cytosol. Remember, this particular course of reaction, the intracellular and dietary proteins, not all the intracellular proteins are always functioning within the biosignaling or biosynthetic machinery. These intracellular proteins are often in course of reaction of protein metabolism acids are being catabolized to the amino acids, and these amino acids are converted again to the end products of ammonium ions and alpha ketoglutarate acid. Now, what does this ammonium ion do? This ammonium ion gets biosynthesized into amino acids, uh, into amino acids again. And these amino acids are basic, particularly the glucogenic and the ketogenic amino acids. Which, right, the glucogenic amino acids means which are having the glucose group as the functional group or the uh, major attachment, the major group, 
and the ketone functional group with the amino acids which are processing those ketose group or the ketone group are known as the ketogenic amino acids which produce the ketone bodies in the subsequent catabolism which gets deposited and uh, rejected or removed out of a body through the urine. And now out of these amino acids the first and foremost three uh, glucogenic amino acids are namely the glutamine, aspartic acid and alanine. Right. Now, what happens is this glutamine gets converted to glutamate in the cytosol of the cells of the muscular tissues or other tissues which are related with the skeletal framework, the striated muscles, the non-striated, the voluntary involuntary muscles or the cell tissues which are uh, supporting, which are acting as muscular tissues, mimicking the muscular, the tendinous tissues, the ligamentary tissues or the tissues which are associated with the central nervous system or vertebral column other than the liver cells. Okay, or, or with, with the muscle cells, the red muscles and all which are associated for supporting the different organs including the liver. So particularly when the muscle cells or the muscular tissue cells, particularly the glutamine gets converted to glutamate. And this course of conversion is assisted with the help of an enzyme called glutamine synthetase which is, which is getting activated in the presence of adenosine triphosphate. Okay, it's an energy dependent for adenosine triphosphate gets uh, uh, formed. Uh, from the adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate. So with the formation of the ATP and the liberation of ATP and with the uh, active, it is an active process, energy dependent process and with the course of energy evolution, the glutamine gets converted to glutamate and drops ammonium ion. The glutamine gives off the ammonium ion, the, the amine group, the NH4 uh, positive group, amine group and itself gets converted to glutamate. Now this glutamate is get, getting converted within those uh, muscular tissues, the other muscle muscular tissues other than the liver cells to alpha ketoglutarate. Okay, and this reaction is a reversible sort of reaction. That's why I've given a reversible sign there. Now this glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate conversion is assisted by an amino acid which is the alanine. Okay, so alanine here, what it does is, it assists the rate determination of glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate conversion or the feedback or the reverse that is alpha ketoglutarate to the glutamate. So where does this feedback, the reverse uh, reaction happens? What happens is this alanine when it's uh, in the presence of alanine amidotransferase which helps in converting the glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate, this alpha ketoglutarate directly goes into the liver cells and forms alpha keto acid. Now this alpha keto acid again gets converted to glutamate in the presence of the same alanine amidotransferase and now the alanine that is coming here is coming from the liver and the alanine which was present here that is coming from the, the other tissue cells in the cytosol. So basically I mentioned that this conversion is happening within the other tissue cells other than the liver cells. But you see that alanine which is present in the liver cytosol cells, the liver cells are also uh, transported. This alanine also is getting transported or this reaction is also somehow happening within the liver cytosolic cells or the cytosolic part of the hepatocytic tissue cells, that is the liver cells. So in the presence of the same enzyme, alanine amidotransferase Alanine amido transferase the same re reaction is uh, directed in the reverse direction uh, that is alpha keto acids or alpha keto glutamate to glutamate now this glutamate right here is converted or catabolized ultimately to ammonium ions that is this this reaction this course of reaction is happening within the liver cytosolic 
uh, area, uh, liver side, so in portions of the liver side cells in the liver area, and this portion is happening uh, within the cytosolic portions of the other, that is muscle tissue cells as well as in the liver cells. Because if, if if this reaction wouldn't be happening in the liver cells anyway, the hepatocytic cells, so we wouldn't be getting the alanine out of the nowhere, out of nowhere that is coming within the liver, and we won't be having the alanine amidotransferase enzymes, logically speaking. Now what happens? Uh, this alanine also gets converted to another compound called pyruvate. This alanine gets converted to another compound called pyruvate. And this reaction, this alanine to pyruvate conversion, this is particularly happening, this particular reaction is happening within the other tissue cells, but not in the muscle cells, in the muscle tissue cells, but not in the liver cells. Because there is a uh, reason why the muscle alanine gets converted to pyruvate and how the pyruvate is getting reconverted to alanine in the liver cells. Right. So the alanine present in the liver cells are somehow not getting converted to the pyruvate. Because there is a reason why. Because the alanine conversion to pyruvate is happening within the muscle cells where the active process or the active energy dependent work is happening. But in the liver cells, Mostly the passive processes are happening. The, uh, it's an organ where the biosynthetic machinery are being operated. So the alanine to pyruvate conversion in the liver is not uh, uh, pretty much obvious. Okay, so uh, what does this pyruvate do? This pyruvate is being directly transported to the liver cells. This pyruvate is directly transported to the liver cells where this pyruvate is again reconverted to alanine. Right. Now, this alanine is again helping the formation of alanine amidotransferase, which is partaking the course of action of alpha keto acids to glutamate, glutamate conversion in a reversible pathway, in a reversible direction. So you see that pyruvate is getting converted to alanine, but not the reverse. The alanine is not getting converted to pyruvate in the liver because already the uh, portion, uh, the amount of the alanine is higher if the pyruvate gets cut, uh, 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 the alanine gets converted to pyruvate within the liver, there might be some adverse or detrimental reaction, the toxicity uh, arising in the liver. Now the pyruvate which is getting converted from the alanine, this pyruvate participates, uh, this, uh, not all the pyruvate gets converted to alanine in that way. Some of this pyruvate participate in a reaction which is very much necessary which is very much necessary for subsequent physiological processes. This pyruvate particularly here uh, gets converted to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetic acid. Okay. In the presence of enzyme pyruvate, carboxylate. Now this oxaloacetate, again, in the presence of enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate, carboxykinase, phosphoenol pyruvate, PEP, carboxykinase, gets converted to phosphoenol pyruvate. And now this phosphoenol pyruvate gets converted to glucose. Okay, now you, now you understand that why the alanine py to pyruvate conversion is happening within the muscle cells, not particularly in the liver cells. Because in liver cells, the reverse pathways are happening, are meant to happen. And that's what the, that's what the liver has adapted to or evolved to. Because if the forward reactions would, it be, would be happening always in the liver cells, in every aspect and all, then it would be very much difficult to compensate the reverse pathways. It would be very difficult to compensate uh, the reactions the uh, the uh, rea the majority of the reactions that is meant to be necessary for compensating the emergency conditions the deficient conditions right so not all pathways are meant to be happening everywhere in liver particularly specific pathways are happening the alternate pathways or the reversible pathways are happening so the forward conversion the forward conversion of from one product to another like alanine to pyruvate or glucose to pyruvate is not happening there are particular areas or particular chambers where depending on the type of the tissue, depending on the type of the energy, depending on the type of the uh, activity that the tissue is performing, the conversions are also happening. So alanine to pyruvate is not 
converted rather the alanine is getting converted from pyruvate because if the alanine to pyruvate is getting converted in the pyruvate would be converted to excess of glucose in this reverse pathway and that would lead to hyperglycemia so there has to be a checkpoint of the physiological checkpoint physiological uh, stunt a stunt would be there a checkpoint of a uh, 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 balance should be there in order to have the proper compensation and the adequate quantity of the conversion so that is how the uh, interconversion or the interconnection between the pathways happen okay now this glucose to the pyruvate con pyruvate to glucose conversion is happening basically with the help of a pathway uh, uh, process which is called neoglucogenesis okay neo genesis now this particular pathway is always meant to happen within the liver why because liver is the only organ which helps in storing the pyruvate molecule now the pyruvate molecule gets converted to glucose in the time of emergency like i said in the deficient condition in the hypoglycemia condition turn where the blood glucose level falls in case of diabetic patients or insulin dependent or non insulin dependent type 1 and type 2 whatever it is the glucose level falls down so the pyruvate gets converted to glucose in the liver and this glucose is then again transported by a blood to where in order to compensate the blood glucose to so the adequate threshold value whatever it is needed to the optimum value but not the excess so uh, the cells other than the liver cells partake the action of glucose to pyruvate conversion again right so the glucose which reach up to the tissue cells in the tissue cells other than the liver cells but particularly the muscle cells that the active work on energy dependent work is going on the glucose is being assisted in the aerobic respiration to the formation of pyruvate through a process called glycolysis right this is assisting the formation of glucose to pyruvate now in this course of conversion of glucose to pyruvate uh, in subsequent steps in the intermediate step dehydrogenation is happening which helps in the formation of n a d h plus h plus let us keep this molecule for time being i will discuss how this molecule is assisting in the interconnection of other pathways in course of my explanation further right so let us pause up to here the nadh now the pyruvate molecule which is getting converted uh, in the muscle cells basically these pyruvate molecules and also these pyruvate molecules that are present in the liver are participating in another vital action or response okay so this pyruvate is getting converted to another molecule which is called acetyl coa likewise this pyruvate molecule is also getting converted to acetyl coa so you see the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coa how the differentiation is happening how the Uh, uh the the uh, the signs behind the concept behind the cycle the needfulness okay the uh, the checkpoint the need for the uh, assistance of the cycles are happening in different position right you see the pyruvate residual cva conversion is not only happening within the muscle cells but also in case of the liver cells it is happening there are particular reasons why different kind of reactions are happening in different portions and these are some common reactions which are meant to be happening within all kind of cells so this is how the interconversion lies because it's it's about all about adapting it's all about adaptation of those particular type of cells which are uh, dependent on those particular pathways so this pyruvate acetyl coa is getting converted in all kind of cells inclusively of the liver cells the hepatocytic tissue cells right so these pathways the different kinds of biochemical pathways or the metabolic pathways either protein or the carbohydrate metabolism they are having different affinity for maintaining or operating themselves in different areas or they might be common or they might be specific 
Right. So this acetyl COA directly enters within. Now this acetyl COA enters within the chamber of mitochondria. A rough diagram of mitochondria first. So this is what a rough diagram of mitochondria is. Now what happens is this acetyl COA molecule enters within the mitochondria. Now the question is why does this pyruvate molecule gets converted to acetyl COA? Because this pyruvate molecule is a little bit complex in its structure. It cannot directly enter into the matrix of the mitochondria. Why? Because the inner membrane of mitochondria is somewhat selectively permeable. So facilitated diffusion of the ions and the smaller molecules happens. So there are two different kinds of protein channels or purines. These are the uh, uh, these are uh, less dynamic. Okay, and these are more dynamic molecules. So these channels, these protein channels are less dynamic. These are they are, they, they are thicker. Why? Because they allow only the ions and the radicals to pass or to, to pump in and out of the mitochondrial uh, matrix. And these are more dynamic, these are thinner, they help in passing out the larger chemical structure or a little bit uh, different kind of uh, molecules or or, uh, uh, or, simple, or or the compounds, the biological compounds, or the simple structure of the biological compounds which are uh, molecular in nature in, through them. They allow to pump in and out or pass in and out in the mitochondrial matrix through them. So this more dynamic structure which are less uh, thick, which are thinner, helps in allowing the molecules uh, uh, to pass uh, through them and this more uh, less dynamic, the more thicker structure, the thicker structure, the thicker protein channels help in allowing only the passage of the ions or the radical. So this acetyl COA molecule after entering into the mitochondrial matrix undergoes a reaction okay, in order to uh, uh, generate energy uh, donating uh, electron donators, sorry, energy donating 
compounds which participate in subsequent reactions. What are the reactions? I will show it right now. So this acid and COA in the presence of the citrate synthetase gets converted to citric acid. Right. Like I said, that the pyruvate molecule is uh, very much larger, but the acid and COA molecule are simpler in structure. So this is this is a particularly a compound, a smaller compound which can easily pass through the inner mitochondrial membrane and this uh, more thick, this thicker structure or the less dynamic structures are allowed only, these coding channels are allowed uh, only for the ions and radicals to pump in and out of the membrane, mitochondrial matrix, okay. So the acetate COA after entering into the matrix of mitochondria is converted to citric acid in the presence of citric synthetase. Now citric acid in the presence of the isocitrate synthetase or aconitase is converted to isocitric acid. Now this isocitric acid in the presence of isocitric decarboxylase is converted to alpha ketoglutaric acid. Now this alpha ketoglutaric acid in the presence of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase or decarboxylase gets converted to succinic acid. The succinic acid in the presence of succinyl dehydrogenase or reductase gets converted to fumaric acid. The fumaric acid in presence of fumarase gets converted to malic acid. The malic acid in presence of malate dehydrogenase again gets converted to oxaloacetic acid. And oxaloacetic acid again in the uh, course of recontinuing the reaction participates or partakes the uh, reaction on behalf of malic acid and itself gets converted to citric acid in the presence of citric synthetase. So it's basically recontinuing the cycle or reconfiguring the cycle. Now, what is the necessity of this Krebs cycle? It's very much important that this Krebs cycle, now one thing I'm going to let you know is this Krebs cycle is not only happening within the matrix of the mitochondria, but this cycle is also uh, meant to happen within the matrix of mitochondria of any tissue, irrespective of any kind of tissues, it would happen in any cell. There is a particular reason why. I'm going to let you people write, know right now only why it's, this is very much important in the course of this reaction. You see the isocytric acid converted to alpha ketoglutaric acid. This conversion is assisted with the presence of an enzyme decarboxylase, which is donating or liberating CO2. And the alpha keto acid is converted to succinic acid in a similar way, which is liberating CO2 molecule. Right. Now, this pyruvate to acetyl COA conversion is also assisted with the liberation of CO2 molecule along with the formation of NADH plus F plus H plus plus FAD plus. Right. Why? Because this pyruvate molecule, when it's get con getting converted to acid and COA to sim uh, in a simpler form, so that it can end up into the tricarb Krebs cycle. This cycle is or the Krebs cycle or the TCA or Krebs cycle which happens within the matrix of the mitochondria. So this conversion is assisted in the course of three isozymes. Namely first one is the pyruvate dehydrogenase, second one is the dihydrolipoyl transacetylase, third one is the dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase. And the reaction is assisted in the presence of thiamine pyrophosphate a compound which helps in the formation of dihydrolipoamide in the last stage or end stage is the byproduct and the dihydrolipoamide, the reduced form is getting converted to oxidized form removing or leaving behind the two hydrogen or the protons which are being uh, accepted by the uh, NADH uh, in the form of H plus and another one is getting accepted as an electron in the form of hydrogen ion with the NAD positive and where does this NAD positive is coming from? Where is these energy positives coming from? These are extra mitochondrial energy positive. These are generated, these energy positive. These are generated by the uh, nicotinamide, adenose and dinucleotide positives, or the electron acceptors. Okay, in the form of protons, the hydride ions, H positive V minus, are produced by none other than the DNA of the nucleus, the proper DNA of the nucleus. Because these are not the energy positive that is liberated in the Krebs cycle that goes on in the mitochondria. There is a particular reason why this happens. Now, uh, this acetyl COA, which is getting converted to the Krebs cycle, you see the CO2 molecule here. This CO2 molecule, when it gets accumulated too much, okay, this CO2 molecule, when it gets accumulated too much within
in the mitochondrial matrix, it leads to the acidity of the mitochondrial matrix, which might uh, burst up or disrupt the entire double membrane bound sophisticated structure of mitochondria, but we can't let that happen. The cell can't let that happen because uh, mitochondria is the inner house, energy, uh, the powerhouse of the cell, the energy house of the cell, as we all know. So this CO2 molecule is being converted to a less toxic form mm -hmm. along with this ammonia. positive and this reaction is assisted in the presence of an enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 type 1 of its kind which helps in the formation of carbamyl phosphate. Now this carbamyl phosphate molecule in the presence of another compound called ornithin which is an amino acid basically, ornithine gets converted to citrulline. Okay, now where is the citrulline molecule goes? This citrulline molecule directly comes out of the cell and in the presence of this conversion ornithine to citrulline in the presence of carbamyl phosphate is assisted with the help of ornithine transcarbamylase enzyme. Now the citrulline in the presence of arginosuccinate synthetase helps in the formation of arginosuccinate. Arginosuccinate. Now this arginosuccinate molecule is a very large molecule. Now this reaction, the citrulline has come out of the matrix of mitochondria. This reaction is happening within the cytosol. Okay. Of cytosol of the liver cells. Now this arginosuccinate in the presence of arginosuccinate okay, is getting converted in arginine. Arginine. Now, this arg in the presence of arginosuccinate lyase or arginosuccinase, which is a uh, breaking and splitting enzyme, which splits the succinate form and re removes it from the arginosuccinate molecule. This succinate molecule gets converted to or liberates fumarate. This succinate molecule helps in giving rise to fumarate. Let me write down here, then it will be easier to understand. Now this arginine molecule, right present right here, is again getting converted to ornithine in the presence of enzyme arginase along with the liberation of another compound called urea. Now, as I said, that already I mentioned that CO2 and NH4, I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago only, a few moments ago, that CO2 and NH4 have been converted to a less toxic form that is very much essential to be removed from the body. Because if the CO2 gets accumulated, it might be more acidic to the mitochondria. NH4 gets associated with different other uh, end membranes of the mitochondria, other cell organs, Golgi bodies, ribosomes. Any, anything else, it, it might be also be harmful or detrimental in the biopinicular biosynthetic machineries or physiological aspects. So that might lead up to unwanted ketone body formation, unwanted toxicity, unwanted uh, heaviness of the blood, okay, metallicness of the blood. Uh, so that would be very much detrimental. So in H4, the ammonia mine is very much toxic. It's very much, it is also kind of uh, very much pungent in nature. So ammonium along with the CO2 molecule 
are being converted to carbamide phosphate, which is converted to urea. This particular reaction is called urea cycle. And always remember, this particular urea cycle reaction is happening within the hepatocytic tissue cells or the liver cells only. There is no other tissue cells in the body which can perform this urea cycle. And this urea cycle is partaking both the phases of the mitochondrial and the cytosolic areas or the portions. Right. Now, the CO2 molecule, you see that many CO2 molecules have been liberated. So where does this CO2 molecule from the cytosol go? This CO2 molecule also enters into the urea cycle and it gets converted to less toxic form or this CO2 molecule and with these CO2 molecules from the mitochondria is being liberated out. This CO2 molecule is being liberated out. Okay. And through the phenomena called hamburger shift, this CO2 molecule is being accepted in the form of carbamino hemoglobin which is being taken up by the RBCs present this remember this function uh, is happening within the liver cells these new two molecules are being transported uh, via the blood into the uh, mitochondrial matrix all these CO2 molecules can be transported by blood into the uh, RBCs that are being produced from the mitochondria. Okay, so these CO2 molecules are also often getting transported to the RBC. RBC. This is called hamburger shift, where the CO2 molecule is being popped out of the matrix of mitochondria and get accepted by the RBCs. And these CO2 molecules can also be transported within the mitochondrial matrix in the liver cells or to the RBCs that are being produced within the mitochondria or the RBCs that are roaming freely within the blood okay, can access the CO2 molecule and form the carbamino hemoglobin compound. Now finally, this RBC carries the CO2 to the lung where this carbamino hemoglobin is being dissociated in the hemoglobin again and the carbon dioxide where from the lungs the carbon dioxide are being liberated out of the body through the process of expiration. So that is a way how the CO2 molecule is being removed out of the body. One is through the urea cycle. This urea cycle is subjected for expression that is uh, through the urine or the sweat the urea is being uh, removed out of the body and the CO2 molecules are being subjected as in the form of expiration, in the form of gas through lungs. Also this CO2 molecule can help in the formation of H CO3 minus ions which are present in plasma or serum of blood which is very much essential for maintaining the buffering of the blood plasma for unwanted in order to balance or compensate the unwanted toxicity or acidity or alkalinity in the blood suddenly which might be very much uh, harmful for the uh, toxic stress or acidic shock or alkaline shock to the RBCs or the white blood cells or the new other platelets, whatever it is. So this CO2 helps in maintaining HCO3, which is a reduced form of HCO3 and it's uh, less toxic compared to the CO2 form that is present in plasma. Right. So the plasma is having another method, another plasma is another medium where the CO2 has been countered in a less uh, in order to convert it in a less toxic form. Now, what does this NADH that I mentioned here? How this NADH is functioning? Now I'm going to discuss that, that how the NADH is functioning. This NADH molecule that is coming one from the glycolysis and another from the pyruvate to acetyl CUA conversion. All these molecules are participating in the electron transport chain. And how? You see the oxaloacetic acid here? This oxaloacetic acid is getting converted to aspartic acid. Okay. Now the aspartic acid leaves or pops out of the uh, 
uh, mitochondrial porins or the channels. And then the aspartic acid again gets converted to oxaloacetic acid, which is again getting converted to malic acid. Okay. Mal this malic acid, what it does is, this malic acid will take the electron. Take the electron from where? This malic acid now will take the electron from this malic acid directly will take the electron from this NADH. So this NADH which acts as the electron NADH gets converted to NAD plus will take the electron from the NADH and re-enter. This NADH is, will do nothing but this NADH, this malic acid minus, uh, malic acid ion, sorry, malic acid ion will, the malic acid will uh, take the electron from the NADH, this NADH and this NADH, all of them, and again, enter through the porin channels into the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, why does this happen? This NADH, it's impermeable. Actually, the uh, mitochondrial inner membrane, this red colored portion is the inner membrane and the blue colored portion is outer membrane. The inner membrane of mitochondria is impermeable to NADH. This is the extra mitochondrial NADH. Okay. So, NADH donates the electron to the malic acid. From where it is coming? From the aspartic acid, which was formed in the Krebs cycle. This aspartic acid pops out and converts to oxaloacetic acid and it's again converted to malic acid. Malic acid takes the electron from NADH which gets oxidized to NAD plus and malic acid is reduced and again enters into the through the porin channels or the channels of the inner membrane of mitochondria inside and participates in the uh, Krebs cycle or TCA cycle. And now the electron it is donating the electron in the form of this H E minus H plus E minus ion, this electron it is donating. This electron is participating where? In the electron transport chain. In the electron transport chain that is happening within the inner membrane of the mitochondria. It is happening within this red colored membrane. Okay, you see the red colored membrane right here. This is actually the inner membrane which I have depicted here. This inner membrane of mitochondria is assisting the electron transport chain. But the malic acid is donating the electron to the electron transport chain. And who is accepting the electron? This malic acid is donating the electron to the inner membrane NADH. It's donating to the, the electron to the NADH plus NADH plus H plus, which gets converted from NAD plus. So NAD plus is getting converted to NADH, which is subsequently participating in the electron transport chain. Right? Which is subsequently participating in the electron transport chain. Now, where does these NADH come from? These NADH are coming from the mitochondrial genome, right? Because this NADH, the NADH which are extra mitochondrial cannot enter into the mitochondrial membrane. Like I said, because in a membrane of mitochondria is selectively permeable. Okay, it's impermeable uh, actually to the NADH. It's a very huge molecule, a complex nucleotide molecule. These NADH are being formed from the inner membrane of the mitochondria, right? Now, the FAD plus, the FAD plus, this is also participating in the electron transport chain. How? Through the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This FAD plus is donating the electron to another shuttle system. These are called 
this system, this aspartic acid to malic acid, this is called one shuttle system, malic aspartic shuttle. And this another, this another shuttle, shuttle system, which I discussed in another of my video lecture, uh, in some, most probably in the in, in a different lecture, I discussed the shuttle system laboratory, which is called the uh, glycerol three for glycerol three phosphate shuttle, where it donates the electron to the FADH, uh, donates the electron to the glycerol D three dihydroxy acetone phosphate, and it gets reduced to glycerol D three phosphate. And the glycerol D3 phosphate again donates the electron to the FAD plus, which is being produced by the genome of the mitochondria. Right. So you see that how the Krebs cycle is very much necessary in order to evolve out the CO2, that is the toxic functional radicals, the carbon dioxide that are present within the carbohydrate compound specifically, are needed to be figured out, that we needed to be uh, got get rid of. Okay. So the CO2 molecules are liberated in one way. The CO2 molecules are being taken up by the RBCs and uh, transported to the lungs, then to the uh, then through the process of expiration into there. And another way, the CO2 is converted to bicarbonate ions, which are present in the plasma in order to maintain the buffering. It is a less toxic form. Okay. Now, what does this fumarate do? This fumarate, which was being liberated from the urea cycle, this fumarate is directly. participating in the Krebs cycle again. Okay, so let's have a recap how the entire cycle is happening. Remember, the interest dietary proteins that we consume in our daily diet are being converted in the course of reaction in the intracellular proteins, which are uh, digested in our stomach and the small intestine in the presence of HCL and success enterocus, which they were helps in formation of the proteoses, peptones, which functions as receptors, biosignaling ligands and all. Now, these intracellular proteins and dietary proteins, not all are functioning in this all biosynthetic machinery. There are some proteins are needed to be got rid of. And so, some intracellular proteins, and dietary proteins are converted to end products of amino acids through the digestion. And amino acids are catabolized to ammonium ion and the alpha ketoglutaric acid. Now, the ammonium ion present here is again resynthesized in the cytosol of the cell. This reaction is happening within the cytosol of the cell. In any kind of cell, it might happen within the liver cells too. Okay, this ammonium ion is transported via the blood into the liver cell and again gets resynthesized to the glucogenic first and uh, most three important glucogenic amino acids like glutamine, aspartic acid, and alanine. Now, this glutamine is converted to the glutamate within the presence of activated glutamine synthetase enzyme, which is an energy dependent process where ADP gets converted to ATP. And glutamine, in this course of reaction, liberates ammonium ion. Right now, this glutamine is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. Okay, in order to assist the conversion of reversible conversion of glutamine to alpha ketoglutarate, this alanine amino acid is converted to alanine amino transferase, which is a this pathway. Now, why is this conversion necessary in the cytosolic pathway? Because this conversion is actually a transamination reaction, which helps in conversion of alanine to pyruvate as well as pyruvate to alanine in the muscle cells and the liver cells. Because if the pyruvate is not converted to alanine here, then the pyruvate, uh, the, uh, the pyruvate is actually uh, comparatively a um, heavier compound. The pyruvate molecule cannot be reduced to a simpler form. So in case of transamination reaction, the alpha ketoglutarate acid is again transported via the blood into the liver cells, where the alpha ketoglutarate is again converted to glutamate, where in the presence of al uh, the same enzyme, alanine amino transfer is it's happening. Now the glutamate is being uh, again catabolized to the ammonium ion. Now the pyruvate, not all the pyruvate molecules are converted to alanine. This pyruvate molecule present here is also converted in a reverse pathway, the undergoes reverse pathway in order to form glucose through the neoglucogenesis cycle. Because when the glucose, in case of diabetic patients or hypoglycemic patients, the glucose, the blood glucose level depreciates. In those cases, the pyruvate present in the liver helps in, helps in compensating or maintaining the threshold value of the blood glucose level. Now, this ammonium ion present right over here, this ammonium ion present in the liver tissues also participates in this urea cycle in the, uh, uh, along with the CO2 molecule. Right. Now, the pile, this pile glucose molecule, which is found in the liver cells, is again uh, uh, through the blood is being transported to the muscle cells of different other organs or tissues apart from the liver cells, where the pyruvate, the aerobic respiration, cytosolic part, 
the glycolysis have been some glucose is converted to pyruvate. So all these reactions are happening within the cytosol of the cells, including this aerobic reaction. Okay, and the alternate pathways are the reversible feedback pathways. Right. Now this pyruvate is converted again to acetyl COA because the mitochondrial matrix, uh, the mitochondrial inner membrane is somewhat impermeable. Okay, impermeable to the larger molecules like pyruvate. So acetyl COA conversion is very much necessary. The acetyl COA is a shorter molecule which can selectively diffuse to the uh, through more dynamic, thinner coding channel of the mitochondrial membrane and participate in the Krebs cycle. Okay, and the pyruvate to acetyl COA conversion is uh, also helps in liberation of the CO2 molecule and the electron donated NADH plus FAD plus plus H plus. And the glycolysis also helps in donating the NADH plus H plus. Now, this acetyl COA molecule which was participating in the Krebs cycle is again. Uh, 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 helping in the formation of oxaloacetic acid, which helps in the, uh, which gets converted to aspartic acid. This aspartic acid is popping out of the mitochondrial matrix and participating in the malate aspartic shunt, where it gets converted to malic acid again. Now, this malic acid is taking the electron from this electron extra mitochondrial heavy uh, molecular structure, electron nucleotide donators, uh, NADH, NADH, which are all. Uh, liberated or which are all transported by the blood to the liver cells here or any other kind of uh, any other cells where the Krebs cycle is happening because the Krebs cycle is evidently happening within any mitochondrial cells including the liver cells. Okay, unlike the neoglycogenesis and the glycolysis pathways. Now the NADH is again oxidized to NAD plus and malic acid is again taking the electron uh, and participating in the electron transport chain by donating the electron in the form of hydride ion in the NADH which is being which is inter inner mitochondrial NADH, which is being liberated by the genome of mitochondria, because the mitochondrial, uh, apart from the nucleus, the mitochondria is always ha also having a genome, which is self-replicating. So this NADH is liberated or generated or formed by uh, the mitochondrial genome. Now the NADH is taking the hydride and the electron and participating in the electron transport chain in the complex one, and uh, the malic acid is again participating in the Krebs cycle. Now the fumaric acid. Now now you see that. Uh, the fumic acid which is found in the urea cycle. Urea cycle is nothing but the CO2 molecule which is being liberated in the Krebs cycle and also the CO2 molecule which is liberated in the pyruvate to acetyl COA conversion are being transported via the blood and being checked out into the liver hepatocytic cells where they are being transported into the matrix of the liver where the, some of the CO2 molecules along with the ammonium ions which were being present in the cytosol of the liver hepatocytic cells or liver tissue cells or other muscular tissue cells which are being transported by blood into the mitochondrial matrix of liver specifically are being converted through the urea cycle in less toxic form urea which is being ejected out of the body and through the urine or sweat and the CO2 again some other molecules of CO2 are being converted to carbamine hemoglobin through RBCs and these are being liberated in the lungs which helps in dejection of the CO2 molecule out of the uh, lungs and again another other CO2 molecule are helping in the formation of bicarbonate ion which is present in the plasma in order to maintain the blood buffering in order to protect the blood from excess acidity or alkalinity or toxicity. Right. Now the fumarate, which is being liberated in the presence of enzyme arginosuccinase as a byproduct of this urea cycle, is again participating, entering into the matrix of the mitochondria and again participating into the Krebs cycle. Okay. So this always it is to be remembered that the urea cycle is always happening within the liver cells only. And no other cell is there where the urea cycle happens. And the glycolysis is happening within other tissue cells, specifically the muscular tissue cells. It's an aerobic respiration. And the neoglucogenesis is happening only within the liver cells. Okay. So this is how a rough preliminary or basic uh, interconversion between the mitochondrial and the citric acid cycle. But I will come up with more other cycles of other amino acids and their interconversion uh, to the other carbohydrate cycles and all in course of my uh, other videos or upcoming videos. So if you like this video, please subscribe my channel. That will really help me to produce more such videos enthusiastically for you people. So please, please do subscribe my channel and share the video as much as possible. Also comment down in the comment section below. And also don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And last but not least, please subscribe my channel so that I can grow my channel more and more for you people and help benefit you people with more such illustrative videos. Thank you.